Well, it's just gone 9 o'clock Central African time. This is BTV News. We are broadcasting live from the nation's capital. I'm Udi Bide Samoka. Let's take a look at stories making headlines. President Masisi officially opens the annual Botswana Democratic Party Golf Day event this morning. Voter registration book released for the public to verify their information. And in sport, Khabarun United to take on arch rivals Township Rollers in a crucial Botswana Premier League game to be played tomorrow afternoon. Binelon Sole interpreting in sign language. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Now in our first story, President Dr. Mokhaiti Masisi officially opened the annual Botswana Democratic Party Golf Day this morning, which is intended at raising funds for the party as well as for the party leadership to interact with members of the community. You can see Kumalo Hesmo. The 2024 election cycle has kicked off and the race is heating up as political parties are gearing up for the national elections, which are just six months away. Parties have started recruitment drives to lure new members and today the BDP held the golf day, which has attracted more than 100 golf players as an opportunity to take the party to the people and to interact with the business community. Democratic Party ya batu ya batwana rikaelela ku interact le all corners all sectors of society either fundries or cause just interacting for very easy really organization e busa realize gore ba ithaloganye ba te ira ba top over itse ba top over party in tsinja e e teletsweng ke bomampele so the reason why the president and the vice president are here is again a, a show of support, supporting sports, supporting uh, activists who have organized this event and also interacting with the business community uh, as well as Batamikiba uh, Golf. The party also aims to raise funds with the golf game for the upcoming campaign drives. <laughs> October 2024, so we need to organize ourselves. It's also a recruitment drive, by the way. By them participating, the interaction that we have with them, some of them may choose to, to be members of the BDP. Uh, they are getting very close to now calling a date, yeah, primary election, a voting process, just to plead with Batwana, uh, especially Madam Kuraha, to be, to be patient uh, because our, our, our process are taking its usual course and reaction to the whole the public is waiting with bated breath to know their representative for the upcoming elections. However, BDP Secretary General Mr. Kevis Kariom urged them to be patient as primary elections are on the way soon. Kikanze Kumalo, BTV News, Khaburoni. The Citizen Entrepreneurial Development Agency, CEDA, and the Botswana Development Corporation, BDC, have donated three vehicles to the Mindset Change Office to help the, the office reach a wider audience. The Assistant Minister of State President, Ms. Bitimelo Famudimo, applauded their efforts, stressing that the vehicles will go a long way in assisting the Mindset Change Office deliver on its mandate. Amukhela Molakleri and Kilikele Tusumalakai compiled this one. The mindset change campaign remains an inherent tool to drive national unity and facilitate efforts to grow the country's economy. Hence, getting the campaign resourced was said to be pivotal to move forward its agendas. Some of the local organizations arose to the occasion, with SEDA donating two branded vehicles and BDC adding one. We inspire our nation to move from complacency to ambition from stagnation to aspiration, nurturing the I can do it or we can do it spirit amongst our people, moving from being spectators 
to be active participants in the mainstream economy. It is, a, it is therefore important that we constantly, constantly remember the underlying principles that underpin mindset change. When the campaign started, we engaged both SEDA and BDC, who responded promptly. As we speak, our mindset campaign team is currently housed by BDC. We were transported by SEDA with branded vehicles. The two organizations affirmed their commitment to continue supporting such initiatives. Today's donation aligns and aspire everyone to work effectively to produce desired results. Where there is a desire to see results, there should be an intention to invest for more better results. At these vehicles, ladies and gentlemen, are not just a means of transport, they are a symbol of our commitment and mobility towards new mindset. They will aid in the crucial work of reaching out to communities across our country, facilitating workshops and ensuring that the tools and teachings of the Mindset Change campaign are accessible to every Motswana. And we at CEDA believe that entrepreneurship is not just about business success, it is about fostering a culture of innovation and resilience. All stakeholders were urged to have a contribution in driving initiatives so as to achieve the country's 2036 aspirations. Gilekelezwe, Somulekai, PTV News. Habroni. The Independent Electoral Commission Secretary, Mr. Jefferson Siamisang, says the voters' roll has been sent to different districts across the country for voters to verify their information. Mr. Siamisang says voters have been given 44 days to do so. Hore Jacamola Ubua Mozana Mole Mongue, you equal city topo, can a old Pelona and a cateo. I hope Kumala Gai quiet away be looting. Mera Ukumala Jana at Tatua would ready to recipe in Morione. Santa Kiroseca Seca, La Rotoma Missa Hore, Maina, Hawaiaga equal city top. I think I could listen to Ibile, I could live here long, last or his and Hore Abalukolone. Me to Rabubi di Maiso, Kirosika Sekarape. Loro Tola or Arona by Dalizine Mo Bucane, Yamana, Le Carona Topo, Yabone. The 70th edition of the CIC General Assembly was officially opened today with various speakers taking to the stage the value of hunting in the. <coughs> Sorry for that. Hunting in the sustainable use of nature and the preservation of ecosystems. Experts in the business of wildlife conservation and biodiversity say hunting is an uncut diamond and stressed the role of hunters in maintaining biodiversity in ecosystem. We see Leon Kabetzi reports from Keshkes, Portugal. Humankind faces what the world has come to know as the triple planetary crisis, pollution, biodiversity loss, and climate change, all of which require urgent global action. The CIC conference zeroed in on the need for bridges to biodiversity to be firmly and collectively established in order to tackle such, with reference to understanding the value of preserving ecosystems through sustainable activities such as hunting. And we truly believe that uh, sustainable use of nature adds value to the biodiversity and it would be the other way around if we don't. We are hunters. We care. We care about nature. We care about wildlife. We care about rural communities. That's our heart. Hunters render a service, a service to nature and to society. And that's what we will try to show over the next two days. Responsible and sustainable hunting and the income and activities it generates 
is one of the largest contributors to nature conservation and protection globally. It is a huge bridge to build up biodiversity. As science shows, responsible hunting activity is contributing positively to sustain or even regenerate biological diversity and health of ecosystems. Experts hold the need for a shift in understanding hunting and its value from a perspective which will drive biodiversity and sustainable ecosystems. And hunters, you are often also landowners, uh, farmers, um, foresters. You are more closer to rural communities, so you can understand their grievances, their concerns, their problems, their desires. You can understand the protests better than, uh, than other um, stakeholders. So I do think the hunting community can help pave the way um, towards biodiversity. Hunting needs social acceptance, which is not evenly spread in our societies. So through your role of helping the bridges, the acceptance can also uh, come in and be useful for the activity itself. The third major challenge is to reconcile with society. The long revolutionary period of unregulated hunting has negatively influenced the way hunting has been practiced by an entire generation of hunters. Many still practice hunting in an individualistic way and publicize it in social media in an irresponsible manner. This discredits us in public opinion, attracting hostility. It's no simple task to reverse that perception not least because it's also reflected in the thinking and actions of certain hunters or representative organizations. Over 85 countries affiliated with the International Council for Game and Wildlife Conservation, including Botswana, who has intentions to rejoin this body, are very intentional in driving the narrative of conservation and sustainable use of nature as a means to promoting biodiversity, an actionable priority the Global Village continues to push, guided by sustainable development goals. Utsidile Ongabetsi, BTV News, Kash Kesh. Portugal. Botswana, South Africa and Namibia celebrated 20 years of promoting seamless movement of persons and goods along the Trans-Kalahari Corridor. This comes after three states signed a memorandum of understanding in 2003 to promote bilateral and trade relations among them. Loni Sukobo reports. Cyclists from Botswana, South Africa and Namibia commemorating bilateral relations which promotes and show unification of the three states on the seamless movement of persons and goods along the Trans-Kalahari Corridor. The cyclists travelled from South Africa and will proceed to Walvis Bay in Namibia. The memorandum of understanding between the partners and harmonizing travelling rules is expected to bring developments and impact lives of the citizens. Free movement is the way to go. Infrastructure like the Trans-Kalahari Corridor are actually catalysts to these noble ideas of unification of the African people. Minister Mulala stated that by harmonizing traveling rules like introducing the use of identity cards to cross into Namibia and reducing the day's goods stay at the borders plays a vital role in economic development and growth of the three states. We want this corridor to grow by leaps and bounds to make sure that it not only promotes trade and free movement but it impacts on the ordinary lives of all the citizens of the three countries. It's a lie, Kudimela, a contributor significantly for our collection, Mama Hatseng Harona. A lot has been achieved by the TKC in terms of trade facilitation. It's a trade corridor that was actually developed to, to ensure that uh, uh, the products from our, our investors, from our, um, uh, our manufacturers, they actually reach the market, they actually reach us. Communities were urged to welcome, support and appreciate the cyclists as they are doing this to promote unification of the three countries. Lona Sekobo, BTV News, Lobat. 
Bank Khabarone yesterday auctioned plot 4890 at extension 11 location in Khabarone for over 7 million pula. The sale follows the previous owner's failure to settle a mortgage he got from the bank. When the bank filed a case, the Court of Appeal investigations revealed that the house was sold and bought with part of the 230 million pula believed to have been stolen from the National Petroleum Fund. BTV News reporter Ngutile Tamahe follows. Court of Appeal Investigations revealed that the previous owner of plot number 4890 sold the year to Bakansi who is believed to have bought it with part of the 60 million pula, whom he was found guilty of stealing in 2021 from the 230 million pula stolen from the National Petroleum Fund. Bank Khaboroni indicated in his court documents that by the time this house was sold, it was owed 5.9 million pula. The bank says it will recover its debts from the 7,650,000 pula which this house was bought at the auction and send a balance of 1,750,000 pula to the government through the office of the receiver. Court papers also show that after purchasing this plot, Bakan Sereze then demolished the house he found and built a new one. After being found guilty of stealing money from the National Petroleum Fund, the government forfeited the house as it is believed to be a process of crime. After this realization, Bank Khaborone filed a case with the High Court proving beyond reasonable doubt that the house belongs to them. The High Court then ordered Bank Khaborone to sell the house and recover its debt and give change to the government. In his judgment, High Court Judge Umpimezi Mutumisi said the property was obtained through process of crime, something that was also underpinned by the Court of Appeal by dismissing Sreta's appeal with costs. The auction of the house and other assets involved in the case brings it closure to a complex corruption scandal. Ungutle Tamari, BTV News, Khabroni. Ramosa police this afternoon arrested two truck drivers after they intercepted them with a stock of, smuggly, of smuggled potato hidden under a load of maize. The two truck drivers smuggled the potatoes at a time when government has banned the importation of potatoes and selected vegetables. BTV crime reporter Ngutile Tamake continues. These trucks were just arriving into Botswana from South Africa through Pioneer Border Gate in Lobaze. Unfortunately, one may think they are only carrying maize load to Zimbabwe as per the cross-border documents, but they have stacks of smuggled potatoes under the shade which has covered the maize. So, I have been able to get the truck to the truck drivers. The truck is the Volvo and the Scania. Bana ba setse ba kupile bang ba kawashi holo la zone di tapole. Me ha re ba botsolotsa ka di tapole wa Suparnya. Di tapole tse re tswale tsone ko South Africa. Re tsene ko ko molelwane wa Pioneer ko lobatse. Ne le gore monga tsone o tlo ditsa gone moramotswa. Me monga tsone ke motho nang ko gabane wa letsola sedzimbakwe. The inadequate search conducted by border officers on these trucks is believed to be a contributing factor to the successful smuggling of these potato bags, especially at a time when the government has imposed restrictions on the importation of certain vegetables. The police are concerned about the ongoing ease which restricted goods are entering the border post. <laughs> Kaurindhitrakatsi <laughs> The two men are still being questioned by the police on the sophisticated methods to smuggle goods into the country. 
tsone dikolo itse ditapole me se se makatsang ko gore ha re ditshwara ena di a mangwa le ba le tsola se zimbabwe re ne ya la ba BRS re le bile gona gore ditshaje tsa bona di kogodimo ana le ditapole tsa teng ha dita o itlo di beile ka tsela ene gore tota ga e health centre even though the smuggled potatoes were confiscated by Botswana Unified Revenue Services Customs Department attempts by BTV News to get a comment from the Ramotswa border officer in charge proved futile. Unkutle Tamare, BTV News, Ramotswa. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Communications, Knowledge and Technology, Mr. Ponzo Pusezile, says the Africa-Japan Collaborative Research Program has great potential in helping researchers come up with innovative solutions to some of the world's challenges. He was speaking at the just-ended Africa-Japan Collaborative Workshop in Maung. Maranyane Samakat. African countries are battling different economic, environmental, and social challenges. Research, therefore, has been cited as key in finding lasting and innovative solutions to some of these challenges. The Africa-Japan Collaborative Research Program thus provides a platform for African countries to come up with evidence-based policies that can contribute to economic and social development. By pulling their expertise, Japan and Africa can tackle common global challenges such as climate change, public health issues, food security, more effectively hence addressing global challenges. These joint research projects are expected to spark innovation and creativity by together bringing different perspectives approaches, methodologies from Japan and Africa. This initiative, colleagues, is about strengthening the granting councils in these countries to actually fund research and innovation in their countries and in collaboration with each other. We face the various kind of global challenges, the climate change, food, uh, food scarcity, the energy security, the water management, and more. Uh, these issues are too immense and uh, complicated for any single country, the region, the sector, or discipline to address alone. So this is why we gathered and started AJ Core, aiming at the fostering collaboration between Afri African sub-Saharan sub uh, countries and Japan to collectively uh, tackle these pressing global challenges. Launched in 2015, the Africa-Japan Collaborative Program is a partnership between the National Research Foundation of South Africa and the Japan Science and Technology Agency with the aim to support joint research and innovation science projects between researchers. About 17 African countries, including Botswana, are now part of the program. Maranyani Samagata, BTV News, Maung. Uganda has expressed eagerness for more of Botswana Vaccine Institute produced animal vaccines to safeguard its beef industry. With a population of over 14.5 million cattle, 17 million goats and 5 million sheep, Uganda's Minister of State for Animal Industry, Mr. Bright Ramirama, said the Eastern African nation was ready to welcome more vaccines from Botswana. Horata Maranyani has more. In their meeting in January this year, Presidents Dr. Mukwezi Masisi and General Yoveri Museveni agreed on strengthening bilateral collaborations in agriculture, particularly cattle breeding and feed production. The two countries are therefore making headway in this regard, with Uganda looking to benefit from Botswana's achievements in the control of foot and mouth disease. The Botswana Vaccine Institute is part of Botswana's success story in FMD control, making it a perfect stop for the Ugandan delegation. As a, a developing country, we trade in animal and animal products, and we have prevalence of diseases that need to be treated. As a government, we invest more in preventive methods than curative. So we are looking at vaccination, a range of diseases ranging from FMD, PPR, uh, CBPP, uh, rabies, and anthrax. So we are here and uh, 
to, to, to see how we can uh, cooperate, how much they can supply us, and in what time or period. To the directive of the two heads of state yes. at bilateral level. So they met in Kampala and uh, they directed us to work together in uh, three areas. First one is uh, disease control, where we have to procure vaccine from here. The second one is animal nutrition, where we have to partner with the Botswana to do feed feeds in Uganda and bring them here to, to support the, the beef industry. We also have diary, and we are looking at how we can bring our diary products here. And uh, the other area is research and development, so that we share information. That's why I have brought the team, my team, with all these uh, brains researchers, academia, uh, animal scientists, and uh, engineers. This facility exports vaccines to more than 15 countries, and it's looking to expand its horizons. as part of their endeavor to appreciate Botswana's beef production industry, the Ugandan delegation will also visit the Ramatlabama artificial insemination farm. Khorata Maranyane, BTV News, Khaburone. The Department of Wildlife and National Parks has registered 76 human wildlife conflict incidents in the Khalakhadi South area, which has affected a number of households. This was revealed by Ms. Masero Pito, who is the Principal Development Officer, when updating Sabon District Council on the current household food security and vulnerability situation in the district. Ms. Pizzo says government has spent over 100,000 pula in compensation to farmers who lost their livestock to human wildlife conflict in 2023-2024 financial year. She says majority of the livestock was killed by lions that had escaped from Halakhadu Trans Frontier Park. There were 76 incidents of human wildlife conflict for this year, for, for this month already. A conflict is lower. A one I lead thousand six in the ten. Say no more about Tuba, Lega, we female amongst on a low and over Java singing. There was a temple, but you belong in the moon last year. Challenger Nalo and Neka, Terena, Halaka, Gahor, Homota, Laru, Erinjar, the Le Fence, Canal and Polo Hall, the Dodi Ayapa, Gotas Rafense, the Conojo, and the Lions are able to dig through the wire and escape at night. It's easy for them to kill livestock because they graze at night. Farmers are advised not to take matters into their own hands by hunting down lions. Farmers should inform the Department of Wildlife of any attacks by wildlife so we can act immediately. At the moment, there is no provision for compensation for livestock killed by wild dogs. However, the Department of Wildlife and National Parks has reviewed guidelines to include compensation for the aforementioned animals and are waiting for approval by Parliament. BTV News. The bereaved families of members of the ZCC in Malapolole have been encouraged to never lose hope in God during this difficult time. These were the messages of comfort from female pastors of different denominations during a prayer session held in Malapolole yesterday. The prayer session was also attended by Malapolole MPs Mr. Kar Mr. Kabo Murain and Mr. Wabili Arhoeng. Jessica Pilani with more. Ke ntlhanya lona 
Argentina lona le ha di ama dintse di le bokete nna ja ho fa ke nthanya lona ha ha mothaswa a thokahala ga mmo fa le botsadi ga ba go bula gila ke a pahela yele gore ha hona mothopo e ka etsala me ja ho fa bodi wa re ke tantsi ha tsa batho batho ba me ba nna ke batlosetsa le kwalo la ja ho fala re ke tla le ntsi ha tsa mona go nya go mpie no mo mo le nteng mo strante se sa tholeng se le teng ma ta ga yo ha go na sepe se se teng na go tsadi ho go tsa modimo ga ra ana re modimo o no bolela ruri ya o teng ke ne ke re ke go reja lo ke re o teng modimo yo o teng ha go na go pe kwa ha ile nteng Unse ona le wena unse wa tsama ya le wena me tsama ya nthe le te le itse gore o bua ka go ntshahala le ta tsama le ya go ntshahala ka se ba ka sa se wa mora go gatse tsothe le ntshahala le tshwana ja ka bontsu trusting in god even at the time of grief and sadness was the message of the day as different church leaders comforted grieving families here in Molepolole the tragic road accident that claims 45 lives of the ZCC and Tengenas members in South Africa has left many but and across the country shattered as it is not easy to accept losing lives at that magnitude or at the same time female pastors from different church denominations took it to the fore in consoling the families and the entire ZCC congregation to show them love and support as mothers during this difficult time bana ba rona ba re tlogetse ka tsela e ba re tlogetse nka yone me ga re kitla re le bala go tsama ga bone me ga re ikanya mo modimo Mudimo o tla tswelela o nna le rona o re tshegetsa go tsweng ka letsatsi le botlhoko jo bo nnileng ka jone Lord of God mm. you know it's a very strong tower ka te rashas ba ta bogela kai go go morena ba ga eso a re ta bogela go go morena se ho se hitile di pelo re tshikinya gile me i want to say this one way to you Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you are maneng a re mane nokeng ka dithapelo a re tshwaraganeng ba kwena a se lo se se re bope se re tshwaraganye re le motse a se lo se se go re itse sengwe le re tsene re tlholane re gomotsane eh ha ne go tshwanetse gore go nne bosula bo be botsadi a mo le mo o tse mo selontsi me ha go kana yalo batsadi mo di mo tla re okeletsa This families together with the ZCC congregation were as to engage and leave everything to God trusting him to soothe away their pain and at the same time believe what they are going through will pass the general public was also encouraged to support and stand with them during this time of grief Jessica Pilani BTV News Molepolole Botswana Police Commissioner Ms. Diana Marate says the Botswana government has requested the South African government to expedite DNA tests on the bodies of the St. Agnes members who passed away during Easter holidays. This is to ensure that death certificates are issued promptly as they are a requirement at the border when repatriating the bodies back to Botswana. Commissioner Marate recently updated the village leadership and the families of the victims during a consultative meeting at Molapolole regarding the repatriation process. Budilo Mohorosi and Jessica. The nation of Botswana awaits with hope to hear about details regarding funeral arrangements for those who died in a bus accident in South Africa last month while on pilgrimage to Zion Christian Church at Moria. It has been confirmed that the South African government is working diligently to repatriate the 45 bodies back to Botswana. <laughs> le nna ke tshwere le molekano wa me go South Africa ba ba six ba mo mushare mo private eh ne le gore go emelwe ba bangwe le lona le tle le le thulaganyo ka kwaru ya gore eh maikelelo ke gore go te go dirwe jamba ga itse ne ke re ga gona se pese pusoe ka se dirang e se na morero le lona hanya gore di re pa ditla ya nka kwano nka le tlhoma misetsa gore etla be le ditshenyegelo tsa puso ga gona ha lapa le pe go tla teng le duele te khang dingwe tse dingwe tse leng gore re tla di tloma mitsa mabapi le gore ditopo ha ditla ka kwano go tla di ragala jang le jang le jang e tla re mo matsatsing a sa he di sempelo ha re sna go wetsa dintla dingwe tsa rona ko di ofising e jalo jalo 
re tla tla go tlhalosa ka boetlahalo gore ba ga iso go ntse jana ha di re paditla e go tla dira gara jana min ka le tlhoma misetsa gore puso e tla dira gore e duele e di tshenyege Botswana government has reached an agreement with South Africa to have death certificates delivered to Mafikeng town to speed up the repatriation process ka ma iso ke gore bona ka kwa ba Africa bor ke bona ba ntshe di death certificate remezi di death certificate tsa ba ba 6 ka gore ba o ya no go wetse go ba gore di death certificate di ditso me re ba kopile gore a ba re se ga thulaganyo e le le ke ka thata gore le he go se thata thata ya ba ba 39 ka gore le bile le gore ga e ka ta ya nna bonya go gore re ka tara go ga go he as this consultative meeting has instilled hope to Botswana, with the residents of Molebolle expressing readiness to receive any updates or reports compiled by South Africa. Baswana encouraged to be patient and unite in this grieving period. Jessica Pilani, BTV News, Molepolole. Well, that's the news. Ntebakhan Sibetlela on standby to take you through the world of a spot. Ntebakhan, it's your time. Take it away. Thank you very much, Ulibile Samoka. Now, Bozana tonight as Sports News follows. The Bozana National Sports Commission has officially announced the names of nominees for the 43rd edition of Botswana Sports Awards, scheduled for the 18th of May at Royal Aria in Tlokweng, Abampit and Tlamelo Montsusi. Adjudication chairperson for the awards, Shemine Govea, says all the affiliates were given a chance to submit the names of athletes to represent them in all categories based on their performance from the previous year. The process entails that we, as the panel, appraise candidates in accordance to the BNSC sports performance system. The quantitative elements include competition at various levels. These levels include national, the national performance um, competitions, regional, continental, commonwealth, world and or Olympics. When we look at the qualitative elements, we look at areas of improvement, contribution or impact, and lastly, discipline. The National Sport Awards recognize sport talent across different sport codes for over the past year. And as mentioned before, these are purely based on performance and votes from the public. The sportsmen of the year nominees are Ross Branch of Motorsport, Lizile Teboro of Athletics, and Karabo Motlang of Cricket, while the sportswoman of the year award will be contested by Mamilodi Sundowns and Mess Win Forward, Refilo Tolakele, Lesoro Massimola of Karate, and Oratile Noel of Athletics. The junior sportsman of the year award will see Colin Kibinatsipi of Athletics compete against Tennis Sensation, Denzel Seto, and Gaon Sala of Karate, while the junior sportsman Sportswoman of the Year nominees are Neo Norampe of Judo, Chess International Master Natalie Banda, and Situnya Majama of Athletics. The nominees for the sports with disabilities are Edwin Masuhe of Pasobo and Tuso Masala of Special Olympic, while coach of the year nominees are athletics coach Geboni Mudisa Dosa, Musima Nyane, Geleto Tukudi of Special Olympic and Hasero Napabalo of Bowling. Team of the Year nominees are Karate Men's Team Kata, Men's Under 20, 4x4 Relay Team, and the Lons Bows Women's Bowling Team. Finally, the Best National Sports Association nominees are Botswana Tennis Association, Botswana Athletics Association, Botswana Table Tennis Association. Abampit BTV Sport, Habroni. 
Now into football, Khabarani United will take on Achi Rivers Township Rollers in a crucial Bozona Premier League game to be played at the National Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Popaha currently second on the lock standings with a seven points advantage over third place to Khabarani United. Lida Apoloko with more. We win this game not to move away from you, but to move closer to Galaxy. We win to move closer to Rollers. <laughs> <laughs> Since 2010, this will be the 26th Khabarani Derby, with 47 goals having been scored between the two giants. Khabarani United, who will be playing as host, have scored 21 of those goals, while Township Rollers found the net 26 times. Statistics therefore give Township Rollers a slight advantage over Money Machine, especially that Popa have so far recorded the most league derby wins. In their last five head-to-head -head meetings, however, the Reds managed to win two, the same number as Popa, and played to a one-all draw on one occasion. The last time the two sides met was in December last year, and Popa walked away with the breaking rights after a 2-1 win. The money machine goes into this encounter sitting on position three with 41 points they acquired from 12 wins and five draws. Pontomulo's troops lost four games in the process. Muloi says they are going to fight to get the maximum points to improve their lock standings and better their chances of winning the league. We really need to, to go and try and win and uh, to keep our, our chances alive, you know, in the race. Uh, you know, mathematically, the, the, the race is still on a whole, a whole lot. And we need to keep up with the pace, we need to keep up with them and the other guys in front of us as well. So, yeah, it means a lot to us. We really need to go and uh, get a positive result on Saturday. The game di dictates that uh, you know you play until the last moment, until uh, uh, the fat lady sings, isn't it? Yeah. So whatever result comes uh, on Saturday, we'll still play and until the last game. We are in a very good run of results. Uh, five wins out of six games we have played so far. So we are in a very good role. Popa, on the other hand, have managed to collect 48 points, five shy of log leaders joining Galaxy, who are on 53. The Mamasire Bay side have won 14 games, drawn six and lost once. A win from this game will see Coach Morapedi's men close the gap between them and Galaxy to two points. Game of football, you never predict. It has its own unfolding. But as per the preparation, we are ready. That's why you confidently say, come on Saturday, be a witness. Whichever team that wins the game, it means it has some new options of movement as per the game. Pressure that you are talking of is a pleasurable pleasure. Even the ball that we play, is not pressure at the end. So we accept the pressure that comes with it, the, the, the game. The big question then is, who will outsmart the other between Innocent Morapedi and Pontomoloi, who was coached by Morapedi at Mujuri Center Chiefs? All this, including the breaking rights question, will be answered at the National Stadium on Saturday at 15.30 hours. The game will be live on BTV1. Lydia Poloko, BTV Sport, Khaboroni. Still on Habroni Derby, the two captains from both teams, Muthusi Johnson and Simsanima Tumum, say they are ready for the Derby and have promised football fans an entertaining game. Lydia continues. I know all the games we are playing for, we are playing for three points, but yeah, like me, I'm high on it. It's like it was my never by missing Radia for game, even though we are still left with two more days to prepare. But and lastly, fifth place, the Prisons 11 will face Logan United in a First Division South League encounter scheduled for Saturday at SSG Crowns. Khomsos Fako and Bami Lokoma with more. Prisons 11 going to the encounter after a 1-0 defeat to City Pola last weekend. Sylvester Madis's men will be aiming to secure maximum points in order to move further away from the Logan outfits, who are just a single point behind them on the log standings. 
the Waters have managed six wins, five draws, and lost five matches in the process. Coach Madisa will be banking on the likes of Musa Tamukate and Marapedi Kangakaletsui to aid in securing the crucial points. Yeah, obviously the break has affected us, but uh, we've been playing. Uh, we've played uh, about three friendly ga games during the break, so uh, I'm hopeful that uh, the fitness levels of our players will be okay. From our last game, we'd say we have been working on concentration laps. Because if you look at our games, most of our games we are conceding in the dying minutes. So even in the in our previous game, we conceded to us the at the beginning of the, the second half. So we have been working on concentration, finishing and transition from defense to attack. Our speed from defense to attack was very, very slow. So we have been working on transition from defense to attack. Meanwhile, Tokyo United go into their Saturday's match fresh from a draw against Mushudu and Chiefs. The coach will depend on players such as Peño Molefe, Anol Mampure and Edwin Khosimori to maintain the team's performance level. United have managed five wins, seven draws and five losses and managed to score 19 goals, something the coach said they aim to improve. Ruina, Ruina, bo one not two one. Hargor, mar tatatari re lekahura scoring. Sawa rukona kore, rukona re oke se di goal zero na because how level it's a team er goru anta tam. The more I go mar guarang, ke the more ka wina meche motlo. Ke plane aro na because road le la ha di plara di coach ita team yone re di wina ra road re re bata wipona re re se re se ha tot. In other matches still in the first division south to be played over the weekend, Mushuri Sana Chiefs, who recently lost three points due to disciplinary issues, will face Notwane at River Place grounds. Desert Nga will take on Mohori Sana Fighters at Zabon VDC grounds, while second place United Flamingo Santos will meet third place City Pola at Khaban United grounds. At Black Forest Arena, Black Forest will host UB Hawks. In the first division north meshes, Santa Grano will face Makungulu Peswa at Pekinini grounds. Balakalungu will host Calendar Stars at Prisons Ground in Kasani, while Motagase and Green Lovers slash at Palapi Stadium. Zabote will take on Peacemakers at Newtown Primary School grounds, while Sango Bush Parks lie in wait for BR Islanders at Mount Sport Complex. Finally, Piliko United and Chadibe will lock horns at Orisari Pusani Stadium. Homza Safako, BTV Sport, Khaboron. From Bozana tonight, a sports desk that has only had for you this evening until we meet again tomorrow, same time. Now, Ulibile Samoka, the ball is back in Okot. Thank you so much. Let's meet again tomorrow. Thank you very much. All right, let's take a reminder of our top stories. President Masisi officially opens the annual Botswana Democratic Party Golf Day event this morning. Voter registration book released for the public to verify their information. And in sport, Khabarone United to take on arch rivals at Township Rollers in a crucial Botswana Premier League game to be played tomorrow afternoon. Well, that is all that we had for you this evening. Do stay with us. Weather is up next. Good evening and welcome. The other forecast tonight is brought to you by Kumo Sasa Monarch. This evening, clear skies are visible over most parts of our country. On Saturday, we are expecting few pairs of clouds to be visible over Khansi Khalakadi, southern southeast Katling and Gwenin district. Over the remaining district, we are expecting some clear skies. In the morning, we are expecting some mild temperatures over Khansi Khalakadi, southern southeast Katling, Gwenin, southern central and northeast district. Over the remaining areas, we are expecting some warm temperatures. In the afternoon, we are expecting some warm temperatures over Khansi Khalakadi, southern southeast Katling, Gwenin, southern central and northeast district. Over the remaining areas, we're expecting some hot afternoon temperatures. We're expecting to record maximums of 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. On Sunday, we're expecting few patches of clouds to be visible over Hansi Kalagadi, southern southeast Hatling and Gwenin district. Over the remaining districts, we're expecting some clear skies. In the afternoon, we're expecting some warm temperatures over Hansi Kalagadi, southern southeast Hatling and Gwenin district. Over the remaining areas, we're expecting some hot afternoon temperatures. We're expecting to record maximums of 33 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. That's weather forecast. Have yourself a good evening.